Well, the day is finally upon us. Justice League. Mostly directed by Zack Snyder, partially directed by Joss Whedon, and starring Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, and Ben Affleck. And for all you rabid DC fanboys who cannot take anything but glowing praise for this movie, I refer you to the comments I gave in the intro to my Batman vs. Superman vlog. And yes, the you mad rule is still in effect. But anyway, Justice League. Steppenwolf has come to Earth to basically destroy everything and turn the planet into a desolate wasteland. For reasons. And Bruce Wayne has to put together a team of superheroes to stop him. And that's it. Easiest plot summary I ever done. I have had a great feeling of anticipointment ever since this movie was announced. Uh, Wonder Woman kind of gave me a little glimmer of hope, but still, I had my doubts, and now that I've finally seen Justice League, it's okay. Which is honestly better than I expected. Some parts work, some parts don't, and it's a bit of a mess, which is kind of expected considering Snyder understandably had to drop out in the middle of production and Whedon had to pick up the slack, but it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been Suicide Squad. And before I talk about anything else, I need to get right into Henry Cavill's face because, oh God, oh God. Now, in case you somehow are not aware of what happened, Justice League principal photography wrapped, and then they decided they needed to do extensive reshoots. But by this point, Henry Cavill had grown a beard for a separate movie role, and they wouldn't let him shave it off, because for reasons that are beyond me, just having him wear a prosthetic was out of the question. Or maybe Paramount just wanted to fuck with Warner Brothers. I don't know. That's that's entirely possible, actually. In any case, they'd already filmed a bunch of stuff with Superman not having a beard. So the new stuff, he couldn't have a beard either because it had to match. So they had to digitally remove the beard. And the very first shot of this movie is a flashback with Superman and that face. What's wrong with your face? Oh my God, it's just, it looks so bad. I heard rumors, but oh my God, even if I didn't know anything about the reshoots and the beard, I still would have known something was up because it just, it didn't look quite right. His mouth didn't really open and close properly. It kind of looked like he was storing food in his cheeks for the winter in some parts. Like, do you remember what Mark Hamill's face looked like in the Star Wars Holiday Special? Imagine the digital version of that. That's what we're dealing with. It's bad. So yeah, I had to get that off my chest right away because it's the very first thing you see is that face and oh, it's so bad. But there's good stuff in this movie. Finally, the Snyderverse figured out how to have fun. I'm as surprised as you. And I'm sure Joss Whedon's influence helped a bit there, but there are actual light-hearted moments in a movie that features Snyder's Batman and Superman. Holy shit! And there are serious moments too, of course. I mean, Steppenwolf is trying to destroy the Earth, and as you would imagine, most people have a problem with that. But still, it knows how to have fun. There is banter in this movie. Honest to God, banter. There are jokes, one-liners. For real, not all of them hit, but they tried, at least. They tried, and Superman smiles. Sometimes it doesn't look right because, you know, the, the face, but still, he smiles and jokes around with his fellow Justice League members and has emotions and is actually portrayed as the beacon of hope that he's supposed to be, and his outfit is blue. 
Like, it's actually blue. There's color in this movie, and it's fucking blue. Apparently, it always was blue. I had no idea. It's blue now, I can tell. Where was this Superman in the other movies? I like this Superman. This Superman's a nice guy. The other one was a jackass. But while I'm glad we finally got this version of Superman, how we got it is a bit confusing, because Batman especially keeps referring to Superman as this beacon of hope. I It felt like they said that 50 times, even though it was probably only like three, but still, they really, really want you to know that Superman is a beacon of hope. It's this movie's with great power comes great responsibility. And did we not just spend all of Batman vs Superman trying to deconstruct that, and now we're just kinda pretending that never happened, although at the same time, kinda not. It's weird. This movie seems to be trying to retcon everything that happened in Batman vs Superman, while at the same time making references to it. There is an actual callback to the do you bleed line. They're trying to have it both ways and they really just need to pick a fucking lane. A lot of stuff in this movie feels very disjointed. I mentioned they did extensive reshoots for this movie and they are obvious. And not just because there's a lot of stuff in the trailers that's not in the theatrical cut and not just because of the face, although that's a dead giveaway as well, especially when there are shots in the same scene where the face looks normal and then Blah. One of the early scenes in this movie is a scene where Batman meets Aquaman for the first time. And the scene is basically done in two halves. And you can tell which half was done by Snyder and which half was done by Whedon. They are almost comically mismatched. And every member of the Justice League gets his or her grand entrance in this movie, and they look pretty awesome. Um, I'm not sure why Aquaman's grand entrance was accompanied by Icky Thump, but it was an interesting choice, but okay. But the problem is, sometimes these grand entrances happen the second or third time we see these characters. And I can't help but wonder if that's how it was originally supposed to be. I would pay good money to see the original shooting script for this movie. I am very curious. The special effects, some look okay, some look kind of pointless, like the lightning that always surrounds the Flash's body whenever he runs. I don't know why it's there. It just feels like computer-generated effects for the sake of it. It doesn't look bad or anything. I just... It just felt unnecessary. And some of it is just bad. Cyborg especially looks awful. There are moments where his face does not appear to be connected to the rest of his body. It looks like it's just kind of floating there. Why did the entire suit need to be CGI? Did you people learn nothing from the Green Lantern? The music was pretty good, but it's Danny Elfman, so what do you expect? And we do get to hear his Batman theme again, which made me very happy. Steppenwolf was kind of a letdown, honestly. He's this big, unholy badass of doom, and that's really all he has going for him. He wants to destroy the Earth because he's a villain and that's what villains do, and that's pretty much his entire motivation. He is the stereotypical bad guy who is in search of a thing, and the heroes have to stop him from getting the thing. That's it. And there is the briefest of brief mentions of Darkseid, but if you have no idea who that is, it's not gonna mean a damn thing. And by the time they do introduce Darkseid in this franchise, you probably won't even remember that he was mentioned in this movie. Batman and Wonder Woman were fine. Their friendship honestly didn't seem all that convincing at times, but Affleck and Gadot have done a great job bringing these characters to life. The new heroes were fine for the most part, but the problem, and this is no fault of the actors at all, is this movie basically has to do an origin story for three different people and the whole thing just feels so rushed because of it, and it just highlights why all of these characters should have had their own movies before Justice League. Cyborg especially, my god, he needed to have his own movie, because I want to see a movie based on that character now. Just with a better looking suit, please, for the love of god. And Ray Fisher did a great job with the character. Jason Momoa was pretty good as Aquaman, or Aqua Bro, rather. 
was, that's basically the character he's playing. He was fun. I liked him. I would have liked it better if his trident was an actual trident and not a quindent, but what can you do? Ezra Miller as The Flash has been very polarizing. Some people like him. Some people hate him. I thought maybe a couple of his lines, it felt like, okay, you're trying a little too hard here, but overall, I didn't really mind him. Honestly, my biggest problem with Ezra Miller is he's not Grant Gustin. And that's not really his fault, but Gustin's my Flash, and this movie did nothing to change that. In the end, Justice League is a mess. It was always going to be a mess, but it's a step in the right direction. I will give them that, and hopefully it's a sign of better things to come because DC and Warner Brothers really need to get their shit together, especially if they want this franchise to actually last long enough for Darkseid to show up. I can't say it's worth full price. It's definitely not worth a 3D surcharge, but for a matinee, you could do worse. And the movie does have two bonus scenes in the credits because they finally figured out that's what people expect from superhero movies. And in typical fashion, there is one silly scene and one serious scene. The silly scene involves a fun moment between two of the superheroes, and I still can't believe that's actually a thing in this universe now. Thank you. And the serious scene is a sinister sign of things to come. And I can't believe that one guy showed up. Did not see that coming. Well, I think I've ranted about this movie long enough, so till next time, take care.